five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. Five alarm fire. Five bells. Move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. Presenting Firefighters. The true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a minute, we'll transfer you to the movie theater where Tim Collins, rookie fireman, finds himself in the midst of a panic, a wild stampede of terror-stricken men, women, and children toward the exit, driven mad by the fear of fire. And worst of all, there is no fire. This panic is the work of a ruthless, practical joker spreading the false cry of fire, run for your lives. Chief Cody is on the spot to begin his investigation. But first, here's a matter you'll want to investigate for yourself. Let's go, firefighters! Tim Collins, rookie fireman, has just fought his way to the aisle in a panic-filled movie house and grappled with a mysterious culprit whose idea of fun is to spread the false cry of fire. As Tim's grasp closes on the unknown prankster, we hear... He's up there. This is Chief Cody. Uh, Oh, sorry, sir. I had my hands on that fellow. I was trying to see who he was. Never mind that now, Collins. We've got to calm these people down. Yes, sir. Now get up on that stage. Tell them there's no danger before they hurt themselves jamming the exit. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. All right, let me through there. This is the fire department. Now take Let your fly. seats, everybody. There's no danger. There's no fire. Take your seats, please. No, great Scott, another false alarm. That fiend has fouled up half the fire department with another false alarm. All right, take your seats, everybody. This is a false alarm. There's Tim. There's Tim on the stage, Mommy. Please, ladies and gentlemen, sit down. There's no fire. Glory be. It seems so much safer with the lights on. There now, people are going back to their seats. Northside School. Who's here from Northside School? Raise your hands, please. Well, that's you, Trudy. Well, here I am. There's Sadie Kramer and Ben Lawrence. Listen to your brother now. All right, Northside School. Now, this is just like a fire drill. Now, keep cool. Keep quiet. Keep your head. (laughs) And keep your seat. They're all sitting down again. Well, now, the children are setting their elders a good example. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Now, a word from Chief Cody, Chief Bob Cody of the fire department. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Bob Cody, your fire chief. Uh, Take the microphone, sir. Oh, blast the microphone. I'm not one of those fellows with a pretty voice. (laughs) Did they hear me? Well, never mind. I've got something to tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no fire, there is no cause for alarm. You have been the victims of a practical joke. Now, as chief of your fire department, I guarantee, I guarantee that we will track down and prosecute to the limit of the law the perpetrator of this wicked, cruel, practical joke. It's only luck that no one was killed or severely injured here tonight. Meanwhile, on with the show. Oh, to think I had my hands on that rascal, Chief Cody. I had my hands on him and he broke away. Now, don't blame yourself, Collins. Hmm. And don't worry. We'll get him soon. He's getting reckless. Yes, sir. I see what you mean. He's getting careless and maybe he'll take a chance that'll drop him right into our hands. That's what I'm hoping. Well, I'm going out to the street. I've got to tell the boys from the fire companies that this is another false alarm. Yes, sir. Uh, You wait for me in there, Collins. Here in the manager's office? Yes, go on inside. All right. There's somebody in there we want to talk to. I'll be back as soon as I've ordered the recall. Uh, Excuse me, Chief Cody said I was... Jimmy. Hiya, Tim. What are you doing here? Just sitting here, that's all. Who let you in here? Chief Cody. He said I should stay here till he gets back. So you're the somebody he wants to talk with. Well, I'll be... What um... do you mean? Jimmy, back there at the house, I thought you were out of this case. You told Mom you didn't have anything to do with these false alarms. Gee, golly. I don't only 
Just sort of. Yeah, only just sort of. The night of that first false alarm, you lose a red and green knitted glove. The left-hand glove from the pair Aunt Ellen gave you. And that same night, a glove is picked up under the box where the false alarm was pulled. Well, I said I lost my glove somewhere, didn't I? And tonight, Mom and Trudy and I are all sitting together watching the movie when somebody pulls a false alarm from the box here in the theater. But where were you? Well, well, didn't I say I was thirsty? Yes, you said you were going out to get a drink, Jimmy. All right, I'm asking you, did you get it or... No, no, I didn't get a drink of water. Well, then where were you when that false alarm was pulled tonight? He was out in the lobby, Collins. Talking to me. That's where he was. Right, Jimmy? Oh, gee. Yes, Chief, and thanks. Golly, I thought Tim wanted to be a fireman. Now all he does is play detective. Wait a minute. I, I don't get it. One minute all the evidence points. One way, and before you know it's Bill, all pointing... that's the trouble with detective work. You never know where you are until you look back at the case afterwards. Now then, let's get to work. Jimmy, you've got something to tell us, but... I want to hear your brother's report first. Mine, sir? Yes. Uh, what about that fellow you grabbed in the dark? Oh. oh I, I never heard that voice before, sir, but for size... Well, I'd say about the size of Jimmy here. Hmm. So it's a boy about 14, more or less. And when we get him, we'll clear up both cases of false alarm. Do you have proof he's the same fellow as last time? Yes, sir. Plenty of proof. Here. Look at this. The other glove. The mate to the glove we found the night of the blizzard. Golly, gosh. Where'd you find it? Out in the corridor behind the auditorium, Jimmy. Right under the alarm box where that... that maniac dropped it. Jimmy, I think you'd better come clean. Huh? Come clean about what? Oh, gee, Chief, about my gloves. I had a pair like that, only I lost one. And Tim keeps thinking maybe I... Jimmy. Jimmy, where's that glove you showed us at home? I hope you've got it right there in your pocket. It'll look bad if you haven't. Oh, all right. There it is. Oh, Jimmy, you're in the clear. That proves it. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Chief Cody. That's all right, Collins. I'm a little relieved myself. Though it would be hard to suspect Jimmy here, since he and I are working together on this case. Working together? Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's why you had him wait here in the manager's office. Collins, your brother has a line on another boy who owned a pair of gloves like this. He saw that boy here in the movie house tonight, before the panic broke out. He was just about to tell me the name when the false alarm was pulled. Wait a minute, Trudy. Let me fix my hat in the mirror. <gasps> Thank goodness there's fresh air out here in the lobby. Mommy, I'm going over by the door and wait for you where the air is even fresher. Wonder if I should change the ribbon on this hat. All right, Trudy, don't get cold. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's you, Doopy Dolan. Uh, hiya, Trudy. How'd you like the show? <laughs> what did I tell you? Didn't I say something might happen? But that scare about fire and, and people trying to run out of the theater and... Doopy, how did you know it was going to happen? Oh, me? How could I know? I just had a hunch, that's all. Clang, 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 when the engines come roaring up the street and all the people were screaming and yelling in the movies here and... Oh, man, that's the most revolting thing I ever heard. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Gee, wasn't that awful? Uh, well, I I'd better be going, huh? Gosh, I I'd have been home long ago. I did go home. Only my mother, she made me come back. Your mother sent you back here to the theater, young man? Oh, yes, and she did. After the fire engines left, I went all the way home. All the way. And then she makes me come back, just because I lost something. And how am I going to find anything when the theater's all full of people and in dark and all? Well, lost and found is in the manager's office, Doopy. Everybody knows that. And here's the door of the manager's office. Oh, well, I... Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe my mother won't be sore if I tell her I looked and it wasn't there. Now, you don't want to tell fibs to your mother, do you? Uh, oh, no, ma'am. It wouldn't be the first time. Hush, Trudy. Well, young man, you just knock on that door and tell the manager what you lost. Well, I... I if he's busy or... Now, you're just bashful. Shall I knock on the door for you? No, no, ma'am. I, I... Well, I, if I gotta do it, I guess I gotta... Oh, gosh, all the time there's somebody picking on you. That's right. You knock until somebody answers. Now, what do you suppose Droopy lost in the theater tonight that his mother sent him back to find and bring home? And what will happen when the door of the manager's office opens to his knock and Droopy Dolan is confronted with his schoolmate, Jimmy Collins? You'll hear the outcome in our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters! That's it. 
Let's roll! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is written by Frank Jones and is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.